learn with me as we understand how to use Azure pipelines to deploy and build databases with database projects in Azure Data Studio. This week on Data Exposed MVP Edition. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed MVP Edition. Today, I'm joined by Aaron Dempster. Aaron, thanks so much for joining us today. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Hi, Anna. It's great to be here. Um, I'm a database administrator and uh, uh, Azure DevOps admin at Trian Corporation in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Awesome. Cool. Well, it's great to have you on the show. And I'm really excited about the topic today because it's not really something we've covered to, uh, to date on Data Exposed. And this is about using Azure pipelines to build and deploy database projects. And I know a little bit about database projects, but I want to understand like why or why do people do it the way that you're proposing today? Great question. Um, it's for database or deployment consistency um, is one reason to use Azure pipelines. Um, you can get a, it, you're automating the deployment process. So as you have code over time, those that can just flow out to your database. And we'll see that in the demo later on, how awesome. easy it can be. Cool. Love to hear that there's a demo coming. Um, okay. So let's get right into it. Like, what do I need to do? How does this work? Sure. So there are some tools that you need to have available. First is De Azure DevOps. Um, here we're going to use the pipeline. Uh, and we're also going to use the Git repository to store the database schema. To get the schema um, set up, you'll want to use Azure Data Studio. And we're going to use the SQL Database Projects extension. And you'll also want the Git client. Um, if you're going to deploy it on-premises in SQL environments, you'll want Azure DevOps Agent and the SQL package.exe. So let's jump into the Azure Pipelines. So this is a, an eye test, definitely. But here's what YAML looks like. And I'm going to highlight two pieces of this to see what it's doing. The first is the build process for Azure uh, Data Studio. And the piece to see that is that we want to create, or we are going to create a DAC pack for AdventureWorks. The other piece we want to look at is the deployment. So we're going to deploy to a dev server. And in this case, it's on premises. It's not in Azure. Um, and one thing that you'll notice in the bottom screenshot is that my server name is localhost. I don't need to give it a formal name if it is on the same computer as, as the agent that I just mentioned. Um, so that'll give us, we have that flexibility to uh, run this on our own SQL uh, instance. Awesome, more straightforward. Yeah. Uh, so let's take a quick look at, at Azure repos. I'm just going to give a real quick overview. Um, as you come into an empty repo or nearly empty repository, um, this is what the screen Azure DevOps looks like. On the left, you have an op area um, for branches and pull requests if you're doing some advanced stuff. Um, otherwise, you have the file listing on the right. One of the things you're going to want to know with Azure Data Studio is the URL for the Git repository. And it, it, it's easy in my mind to think of it as this way. Then I'm going to start with dev.azure.com. And I'm going to add in my organization, the project, and the repository. And they're all in order on the top um, Chrome trail. So I'll take that URL into Azure Data Studio when I'm prompted to clone a repository. And now I'm ready to go. So let's take a look at this in action. So here I am in Azure Data Studio again, and we're gonna clone the repository. This is the same step as the last slide. I'm uh, just going out and connecting to that data exposed 
um, project and repository I've set up for this session. And now I need to choose what, where I'm going to store the project. So I just have a projects folder on the C drive. And now Azure Data Studio is going and getting that, um, getting the project set up. So with, or source control. So now it's time to set up the project. So I'm going to use the AdventureWorks database. And I'm going to, it's a SQL Server database. And I'll save it to that folder I just created in the last step. And Azure Data Studio wants me to do a quick restart, so I'll go ahead and do that. But it doesn't take very long to do. This is real time. And it gave, gave me a prompt asking if I wanted to open the repository. I'm going to say yes, and then I'll choose where I want the repository, uh, the Git repository to be pointed. And that's the local repo on my computer. So now we'll take, we're going to take the schema from the database and add it, apply it to our database project. I'll go click yes. And this will take just a minute or two uh, to bring that together. It's taking all of the tables, views, functions, stored procedures, and creating individual script files and adding them to the project. Oh, that's so pretty cool. It seems, yeah. uh, seems very easy and straightforward to get started. It seems like kind of Azure Data Studio guides you through if you're not sure kind of what the next step is. Is that what your experience has been? It has. It's very um, intuitive. Awesome. And does this depend on how big the database is? Or, you know, how do I know how long this is going to take and what all it's doing? Yeah, so it'll... If you have a large database, and I mean the lots of tables, the, a lot of schema, it'll take a little bit longer. But as you can see, as my screen scrolled, it went and took care of that. Um, didn't take very long. It's only about seven seconds. Wow. So I do have a new table that I'm going to create in the database just to show a change. Um, it's, it's called sizes. Um, in the production.product table, we've got two columns that I'm just going to we're gonna future proof and just add this key um, just to show again uh, how to make a change. So I made those changes and now I'm building the database project and it took five seconds. It, it's ready to go. So now I'm gonna commit all the changes to source control. First, it's gonna go to my local repository in uh, the C projects folder. And I'm just giving it a comment so that when I come back to this, I know what I did previously. So everything's saved locally, and now I'm going to, I just think, start the process to sync it to Azure DevOps. And I got a checkbox, so that finished. Wow. In just that amount of time, we've I've taken the schema from the database and stored it in Azure DevOps. That's pretty cool. Okay, so that's the like Azure repos side of it, but this wasn't yes. using pipelines yet, right? No, it wasn't. We're going to look at that right now. Awesome. So previously we were in the, the repos section and now we've come into the pipelines um, section of Azure DevOps, and I have a pipeline called AdventureWorks. So I've come in and I already have a, a build and deployment running. This is the first time this pipeline's run, so I need to give it some permissions. That's only the first time. Subsequent runs, I won't get that message, but now I do have a new one to approve the change. So as a developer makes the changes, a manager can approve them. And it's a quick approval. So now the build ran before I got into Azure DevOps, and it did create the DAC pack and saved it to the pipelines we just saw. And I'll show you a couple of the tasks that occurred within the pipeline. So the first is the build process itself. The output looks a lot like what you saw in, in Azure Data Studio. And now we're into the, the deployment. 
and it, it finished. I published the changes to a database called AdventureWorks Validation on my computer local host. And I'll just go show you that, yes, it did make the change. So there's the table. And then in the product table, we also made another change to add size ID, and that's also there. The processing time was about a minute and a half. So in that amount of time, um, Azure DevOps or Azure Pipeline to push that code out to my development server. Wow, that's pretty cool, pretty fast. I, I, I gotta ask you a question. Uh, you know, when you went through the process locally in Azure Data Studio versus deploying it out to using Azure Pipelines, what's the difference in the two places that you're using there? Because it seemed like it was doing the same thing. It was. So in the in the YAML, I can use an agent, or sorry, in the pipeline, I can use an agent in Azure DevOps, or I can use a build agent on my local computer, which is what I, so I do have a little bit on this as well. Um, sorry. So back in the project, I went into the project settings and I have an agent pools tool under the pipeline. And I've defined some agent pools in my solutions and I have one called desktop ADS VM. I went through earlier and added a new agent. I downloaded the agent, sorry, downloaded it and then did an install, which is really just a, an unzip. So I unzipped it to the build agent and now I have need to run the config. This we're just going to run through this and it's going to ask some configuration settings. So the server URL to Azure DevOps, it's your organization um, URL. And then it wants to authenticate. We're going to use a personal access token that I generated from DevOps. And and then we're going to use the, the agent pool we just looked at. And I'm going to alias my computer as simply as desktop VM. And here we can, it, it's going through and doing it some configuration to report back to Azure DevOps. And it's just about done. So the last two questions are about how to run the service, um, whether I want to use a service account or not. For right now, I'm not going to, so I would just um, run this, use the run script to get this going. And here is the output. So, uh, sorry, as the, the build agent is running, um, you can we can see what it's doing, and it did deploy the um, DAC pack successfully to Dev. Got it. Okay, so this is the scenario for if I am not using Azure Pipe. Like, when would I use this scenario? If you have a, an on-premise SQL Server, or even a SQL Server that's in an Azure VM or a VM in another cloud, you'll need to use this so that Azure Pipelines has access to your SQL Server. I see. That makes a ton of sense. Awesome. Well, cool. Aaron, hey, I, I learned so much during this episode. Uh, as you can tell from my questions, I'm still new to this, still learning. Like, Do you have any tips and tricks for folks who might be just getting started with either Azure Pipelines or database projects? There's some really good documentation on Microsoft Learn, and I'm sure we have some links to those that will be available. Um, and I also am, uh, go to a lot of SQL Saturdays, Data Saturdays, um, the bigger conferences, Past Summit, and SQL Bits. I love talking about um, database DevOps and automating deployments. Um, you can also find me on Twitter 
and I have a, a, my own website uh, that I, it's not real active, but I do blog a little bit on this. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks so much, Aaron, for coming on the show. Uh, to our viewers, we'll put some links in the description. Leave a comment and let us know what you think. Find Aaron at a local conference near you one day soon. And uh, we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed. Exposed.